Ako po si Danilo Nataba. Ang trabaho ko po ay mag-digitize ng mga in-house performance. Nag-umpisa po yan noong 2010. Ang una kong trabaho, nagle-label kami ng mga ano ito. Ito yung mga nile-label namin, mga open reel, tsaka yung mga cassette na yan. Meron isang library si Ms. Sinayda Marquez. Yung ginagawa niya, kinakatalog niya, tapos ibibigay sa akin yung slip. Tatype ko yung ano ito, may number. Ako naman magle-label. Marami yan. Maabang mga isang libo. Ang computer pa namin, yung Worldstar. Tapos, sumunod, naging Windows 95, no? Parang pinag-usapan niyata na kailangan i-digitize. Nang umpisa yung 2009, hindi pa sa amin, kay Ma'am Eva. Eva Marie Salvador. Sila nang umpisa mag-digitize sa taas ng mga Lumatic, ng mga Betacam, Betamax, yan, at saka Video 8. Pinumpisahan nila yun. Nung matapos na yung kontrata nila, kami naman, habang ginagawa nila, sinabihan kami na kailangan mag-request kami ng mga machine. Ang computer namin, nandiyan yung lumang-luma pa. Window 98. Ay, alaan na yan. Oxulit na yung Window 98. Tapos sinabi sa akin, ano bang kailangan request? Yung binigay ko yung mga captured card. Nag-hire kami ng mga nag-digitize. Etong akin, ako naman sa audio, dalawa. Cassette at real tape. Yan naman aking trabaho. Labeling, tapos nag-digitize ng kaset at audio, tapos nag-repair ng machine. Basta nung inabot ko rito, ano pa eh, mga lumang modelo pa yung machine. Na pati mga reel, luma-luma, kaset, luma na rin. Pati tantebo, luma. Na maliit lang na gano'n, no? na portable. Tapos yung TV, wala pa LCD noon, JBC. Wala pa mga LCD, yung ganito, wala pa. So, yun pa yung mga ginagamit, mga picture tube. CRT, kung tawagin. Pagpasa ko rito, i-on ko yung mga power ng mga bawat itong computer. Yan. Tapos yung, yung Mac, computer, tapos machine, lahat. Ayan. Tapos itetest ko kung okay pa. Tapos lilinisin. Ayan, ayan nakikita. May meron mga dumi. May magnetic part na nakadikit doon sa plastic ng itong open reel. Kaya yan ang sinabi ng mga kailangan talaga may transfer yan. Kasi dating araw yan, pag play mo yan, maglalaglaga na lang yan. Wala na yung quality ng audio. Pagka yan, nag-play na pareho yan. Pagka taas nag-play, titignan ko yan. Pagka hindi pa rin tapos, magano na ako mag-labeling. Ito yung labeling. Yung mga labeling na to, yan, ini-encode yan eh. And then, ini-encode ko to, dyan kung kailan na-digitize, tapos kung ano problema. Gala nag-perform, ganun eh. Naglalag na ako yan, 2010. Ito po rin siya, nilalag namin yung dinilisa. Para makikita daw kung ano yung nadudyatas, pwede mong hanapin daw. Dito sa audiovisual, ang aming nakalagay dito ay mga ano, cassette tape, Betamax, tapos may VHS, tapos merong mini DB, may phone record. Tapos yung pinakaunang-una pa nun yung real tape. Ang pinakamatanda namin dito, real tape, 1966, Dularawan. Pinalabas dito sa CCP. Ayan, mga nagsusyo dito sa main theater na katulad ng Bayanihan, Madrigal. Yan ang mga laman yan. Tapos, eh, may mga yung lesi, yung nagpe-perform sila dito sa ating kagaya ng ano, kagaya ng nagpalabas ng ano, ng Phantom of Opera. Wala kami ang hawak na lahat, ni audio, ni video. Yan ang mga laman yan, yung mga show mga opening, tapos yung mga exhibit, tapos mga meeting. Tumigil lang ano ang open reel kasi na pe mapepesaw na tong ano yung reel. 
mga 1995. Sumunod, ano na, yung mga kaset. Kaset, mapapaysaw na rin. Ngayon, sumunod na yung mga CD naman. Eh, CD, ganun din, madali na masira. Dito sa aming room, kailangan na sa 22. Kapag ka nilagay mo na sa aircon to at nilabas mo, matagal, doon madaling masisira na yan. Kailangan naka-vertical position. Hindi pwede nakadagan yan. Madideform yung ano yan, eh. Ganun din sa plaka. Hindi pwede yung nakadagan. Kasi brittle yan. Pwede siya mag-crack. In 2012, when I came in CCP, uh, 10 years ago, I was surprised that we were a video prod team and an archives team that stores materials and documents it, but we didn't have like a, a proper filing system. So we only had like steno notebooks and we didn't have anything on digital record. There were a lot of problems like if you remove a tape from the shelf, they wouldn't know na kung saan na siya napupunta because yung mga tao sa office would memorize actually the shelves. When you say a number like M112, oh, that's on the southeast end shelf of the room. But that's on memory recollection now. There's no proper record, there's no anything. We need to start you know, like an inventory of these things. There was a push when we started digitizing materials na. And then I said, isabay na natin yung archive. So, so they started investing in cameras and then of course, to follow the need na, where do we store this, the footage? Because we're not using tapes anymore. So then we acquired servers. But the problem was, the servers that we acquired, wala pa rin siyang sistema. Bakit hindi na lang website? Like, we want to make it accessible. Dapat kasi in, intranet lang yan. Eh. Like, so why not, you know, make it online, make it accessible for everybody. Yung CCP Collections, ang alam ko matagal na siyang pinaplano ng sentro. Yung damating yung pandemia, parang nagkaroon ng push na mabuo na finally yung archives at gawing mas systematic yung pagkatalog nito at pagbabahagi nito sa publiko. In its simplest form, I think the CCP Collections is the catalog of the center's vast collection of resources and materials. So the aim really was to share the center's materials to the public and to make it more accessible. It's such a big project and it requires a lot of archival labor, right? It requires planning. So we streamlined the process so that most of the members would know the archival process from start to end. So that included appraisal, encoding the metadata, capturing screenshots, among others. And there was also the requests coordinator who managed the requests for materials and resources, which form part of the CCP collections. During the start of the archiving, before the collections even, the files were being digitized. They'll be sent through batches. And then the batches because work wouldn't necessarily be arranged according to year. Because the batch record, there are different types. You have to think about the beta kind of conversions and then also the mini DV conversions, which, which would both be in different batches. So these files are all videos or documents which pertain to a certain event, to a certain year. So we put those in mind and arrange our files accordingly as well. We also have prioritization ng mga files that we would want to share. Like within our future projects, such as yung open access, which is basically a free resource for people to use. So anytime na parang they would want to use certain video or documentation or something, they can use it without having to go through the process of yung requests and everything. They, those are our files that we feel should be shared with everyone. The CCP has one of the largest collection of documented performances. So that includes concerts, dances, 
theater among others and especially for scholars of performativity or theater and dance for example they're important because sin pa nila uhugutin yung data nila for example kung hindi sa mga materials so yung documentation is important in that regard also we're making an effort to not only just create a collection for videos but also for in ebooks teaming up with uh, intertextual division to have their works basically be accessible to the people. So in ebooks, we basically have access to general CCP publications, so literature, magazines, folios, and different other uh, literary works that can be accessed by people if they want something else. So the collection is turning into a parang hub of CCP's creative output, and it's a way for everyone to access these things that otherwise would not have been available. CCP ang lahat ng mga nagpe-perform dito. Kundi para iparinig sa mga estudyante, yung mga nag-aaral, ano ba yung mga kailangan nating saya, ano natin magagamit. Yan ang purpose ng CCP. Ngayon, ikaw nagpe-perform ka, hindi naman alam na iba yan. Kaya, kung mga tagal yan, hindi gano'ng nagagamit. Kailangan i-digitize natin yan. Or i-scan natin yung mga photo para tumagal. Unang-una, ang machine ay napepace out. Kailangan mailipat natin sa ibang format para yung susunod na henerasyon ay magamit nila at mapanood. Kasi ano ba yung nangyari noon? It's important to preserve them, first and foremost, because if you don't digitize them, for example, often we will find like gaps in our history and that's very dangerous, di ba? As we can see today, Without the archive, we could fall into the crux of this information. When we make materials accessible, when we view or access the same materials, for example, we can agree on certain things based on these archives. It can open new questions. So, tingin ko nandun yung halaga ng archive. Lahat na nanggaling dito, hindi mo maitatapon. Ang pagsinabing archive, hindi mo pwedeng kalimutan. Kung nakalimutan mo na bumalik ka dito sa library, hanapin natin. Di ba, no? 